Thank you so much for joining me tonight for more Monday as we continue our awareness series on becoming aware of who we are as a child of God and the privileges that comes with that title and that relationship with our Father, but also the responsibility to live in a way that glorifies God and honors Him and represents Him well. So we have already spent a couple of weeks. Last week we talked about obedience. Um, before that we talked about um, living a life of servanthood and, and be, living as Jesus lived. That's how we're called to live as children of God. And becoming aware of how we live is very important because as we um, you know, become aware of how we're reacting people, how we're acting in public, how we're talking, um, whether or not we're walking in obedience. These are reflections that people in this world are watching, and we want to make sure that we are honoring God with our words, with our actions, with the things that we do so that we represent Him well and so that we point people to Him and, and help God draw them. God ultimately draws people to a relationship with Him, but we're the ones that kind of season that, I guess you'd say, or God uses us to be testimonials of his faithfulness and his goodness. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I had a picture of a little kid in a Superman costume and he was laying on the ground and he's like pitching a fit. If that's how we're going through life and we're just acting however our flesh wants to act, we are not representing God well. And so, like I said last week, this message is not in any way to bring condemnation. It's just to make us aware as we go through our days to be thinking about, okay, am I walking in obedience? Am I forgiving? Am I loving? Am I serving people? Am I, um, is my heart being drawn to the things of God? And am I wanting to reflect Him? Or am I just going through a life and just kind of going through the motions? That's not what God does not want our motions. God wants our hearts. And out of um, our heart of love for Him, our lives will change. And that's why it's so important that we become aware of who He is and what He's done for us and aware of how we're living because we want to make sure that we're walking in a life of faith and walking with Him and agreeing with Him in the way that we think and talk and act so that we represent Him well. And we're lights and we're stars and shining. And so in this dark world, people are drawn to our Heavenly Father. Well, as you can see from the picture of the night, we're talking about glorifying God in our body. So last week we talked about obedience. Well, did you know that one of the commands God gives us is to glorify Him with our bodies? And so, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, you'll find this in 1 Corinthians. You can see it right there, 1 Corinthians 6. And um, I want to just jump down to the bottom of verse uh, 14, excuse me, verse 20. It says, For God bought you with a high price. How? Through His blood. He shed His blood on Calvary for you and for me to pay the penalty for our sin, to put us in right relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. He paid a high price of sacrifice. You talk about a cost of obedience. He, his obedience cost him his life, but it's the very thing in his death that gives us life. So we don't belong to ourselves. We were bought with a price so you must, not you should, but you must honor God with your body. Please realize, whatever I say tonight, I am safe. I start pointing, I've got all these fingers pointing back at me. Everything I share are things that I'm having to work on too. How do we glorify God with our bodies? Well, if whenever you read scripture, make sure you look at it in context of what the author is talking about. Ultimately, the, the main author is God. The Bible is God breathed into um, to the, the hearts of men who wrote it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And what God is saying to us, and in this context, read through the context, is talking about the way that we live, the way that we interact, the way that our immoral if we're acting immorally with our bodies, um, promiscuous sex, if we are um, having sex outside of marriage, if we're being in certain relationships according to the Word of God, then we are not honoring Him 
with our bodies. And we learned in, De in Deuteronomy, I almost said December again, just like I did last time, in Deuteronomy 28, we learned that if we obey this command to honor God with our bodies, to make those sacrifices when the rest of the world is doing whatever they want to do, maybe you're dating someone right now and, and you're really trying to hold out, if you know what I mean. God's going to honor that. It may be so difficult, but your sacrifice, God is going to honor that. And he's going to protect you and he's going to help you. So in the context of this verse, it's talking about avoiding sexual sin. It's talking about certain things that they were eating and not eating. And, and the Bible says right here, uh, in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 5, you say, I'm allowed to do anything. But not everything is good for you. So a lot the Christians here were in this context kind of doing some things they were even allowed to do. But because they were doing this with their bodies, they were eating certain foods that were offered offer to um, sacrifices at, to other idols. Excuse me. That was food that was sacrificed to other idols. Yeah, that food really wasn't hurting them, but it was hurting their witness. So something they were doing with their body was hurting their witness. Sexual sin talks about here, do you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? That is something to really be aware about. <laughs> when you go through life and you think about, do I want to eat this? Do I want to do this? Do I want to go have an adultery, adulterous affair? Do I want to commit adultery? Think about my body is the very temple of God. And whatever I'm doing to this body, I'm doing to God, to Christ who lives in me. Now that'll make you stop if you really become aware of that and think about it. it that might change the things you put in your body, whether it's things that you eat. It might change the way that things that you watch on TV. You know, the Bible talks about how important our eye gate is. Um, let's see. Oh, where was that? Our eyes. Uh, Matthew 6. Let's turn to that real quick. Matthew 6, 22 through 23. No. Yes, Matthew 6. You know, I'm looking for something where it ain't. You can't find it. You might find something else. But anyway, Matthew 6. I was looking at Matthew 5, 22. Your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. So we're talking about this in the context of our bodies are God's temple. And so we want to keep our bodies filled with light. And our bodies will be filled with light if the things that we're looking at are good. Now, this is starting to convict me a little bit because, you know, I'm all about some, lately, all about some TV. I don't know what's been up with that. And we have all of our series we like to watch. But there are certain things when those things come on, I just look at my husband and say, you, you got to fast forward it. And that's the beauty of, of some of the technology we have. And we can fast forward. We don't have to look at it. We can turn our eyes. We can fast forward because we got to protect our eyes, protect our ears. Um, 622. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep and dark that darkness actually is. So just be aware of that. Be aware of what you're putting into your eye gate and your ears. Because the things you hear, the things you see, they affect what's in here. And remember that God lives in here. This is his home we're desecrating. So it's something to be aware of and to evaluate and think, you know, is this putting in good light in my eyes? Or is this bringing and feeding the darkness? So that's one thing to be aware of in regards to our body is a temple of the living God. So we are to honor God with our bodies. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Well, go 18. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one. Pornography. So pornography is an eye gate sin. Creates lust in your heart that can then affect your actions. When you go out and you have um, sexual relationships with strangers 
and a promiscuous sex and a, you commit adultery one it's going to it's going to bring different consequences in your life but it's affecting your body it's affecting your body and there's so many studies on this that, you, that we don't have time for right now but listen sexual or morality is a sin against your own body verse 19 and don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. That right there tells me the Holy Spirit is a gift to me. It is such a gift, and I don't want to slap that gift in the face. I don't want to reject the gift. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, and I don't want to hurt the temple of God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so honor God with your body. So we've touched on sexual sin. We've talked on the eye gate. Some other ways to honor God with our body is taking care of our bodies. Now, I'm not meaning to step on all sorts of toes. This includes me. I'm stepping on my own toes right now. There are certain things like from the outside, I look very healthy. And I, I have to eat well because I've got I've had some stomach issues my whole life. So I eat well. So you might look at me and think, oh, you're in great health. But the reality is my body hurts and my pain in my body a lot of times impacts the way that I act or might feel or the things that I'm able to do. And so a way that I could take care of my body is by stretching, by going to the gym, by eating right. And so I'm not going to say anything to you. I'm just saying it all to me and you can listen if you want. But the reality is no matter where you are, there are ways that you can take care of your body. There are ways that you can take care of your mind, the thoughts that you're putting in there, the thoughts that you're meditating on. And the way you think affects everything. If you have anxiety in your heart, you're creating like anxiety in your body and it's going to affect you physically. So one way you can take care and honor God with your physical body is to think about what you're thinking about and have good thoughts flowing through your minds. And through your mind so just be aware of that we are called we are commanded to obey God and to honor him and everything that we eat and drink everything that we do the places that we go we are to honor God with our words with our actions and with our bodies the way that we use them the places that we take them and um, I think the way that they look as well that's not saying you got to be all dollied up, but just taking care of your body with hygiene and brushing your teeth, washing your hands. I mean, just not feeding yourself so much sugar. Like, I, I'm really having to remember this. If my body's full of sugar, then my immune system is weak, and I'm not taking care of my physical body, and it becomes open to disease. So just think about that. Sit with God and evaluate your life. And I need to do the same because I know that I'm walking in disobedience in a lot of ways in this area of my own life of not necessarily on the sexual sin. So don't think I'm talking about that, but like on the food sin and even some of the things that I'm listening to or, or watching. So I'm going to take this to heart as well. Now, the next thing that I wanted to touch on tonight, when we, we talked about obedience last time, another thing that God says that a child of God, the way we should live and reflect our father is to walk in obedience and to not sin. So if we're in disobedience, we're sinning. And this is a really neat verse, something that I had not seen. It's in 1 John, 1 John 3, verses 9 through 10. It says, um, verse 8, excuse me, 1 John 3, verse 8. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family. So this is talking about us being children of God. Do not make a practice of sinning. So a couple of times ago we talked about how should we live as a child of God. We talked about we should live as, as a servant. How can we live as Jesus did? We can love people. We can forgive people. We talked about last time, walking in obedience. We can honor God with our bodies. 
And if we don't do these things and we continue to disobey, then we're continuing to sin. And the Bible says here that if we're children of God, it shouldn't be our practice to go out and sin. Does that mean we never sin? No. Every day, some way, I maybe I don't have enough faith or maybe I say the wrong thing. I have a sin that I've committed. That doesn't keep me from heaven because God has already laid down his life in, in his son, Jesus Christ, laid down his life, forgave me of all my sin. So it's not about me losing my salvation. But if I am, if I am truly a child of God, I don't make it a practice to go out and let me go practice my sin. <laughs> you hear people say, well, I've already forgiven. You might as well go ahead and do it. God's going to forgive you. You don't have that mindset. Because when you become a child of God and you really realize and become aware of who He is and the sacrifice that He made for you, you don't want to keep sinning. When you sin, it grieves your heart. So if you or I are going out and we're just doing whatever we want and it doesn't bother us, then something's wrong. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. It's the temple of God. And when I know when I go to do something or even say something, I can sense it in my spirit. Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. And then I do it anyway. And then I'm grieved over it. And I ask God to forgive me. And then I try not to do it. I don't set out to go gossip about people. I don't make that my practice. Doesn't mean that I never do it. But think about that in your own life. Are there things that every day you're just running out to do and you know that it's wrong? You know that God's told you to quit. Well, a child of God doesn't make it a practice to sin. They don't keep on sinning the same sin over and over and over on purpose. No, you. and I'm not talking about if you like fall off the wagon or you do things and you, you're trying and with the Spirit of God, you're trying. I'm just saying these are people who wake up every day and they might go to church and say, you know what, I'm a believer, but yet they don't think about God at all. They don't think about their Heavenly Father. And they just go about doing whatever their flesh wants to do, saying, ah, oh, God's going to forgive me. No, that is just wrong. <laughs> Can I just say it's wrong? It's wrong if I do it. It's wrong if other children of God do it. So, anyone who does not live... Okay, so here we go. Verse 10. 1 John 3, verse 10. Go up to nine again. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. That's where that conviction comes. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. That is a really harsh verse. <laughs> And don't shoot the messenger here. I, I, these impact me because I realize if, I don't, if I'm not walking in obedience and if I'm not living a life that glorifies God and I'm not living a holy, righteous life, not in my strength. I'm talking about going and living it with God and empowered through His Holy Spirit. And when I come under conviction, making changes in my life, repenting of my sin, turning from them, that's how a child of God lives. They're not perfect but they're perfectly seeking after the heart of God. They get up when they fall, like I did when I water skied. I fell all the time, but I would learn from my mistakes. I would reconnect to the power source, and I'd say, hit it. That was the command I'd give the boat driver, and the boat driver would go again. Did that mean I wouldn't fall again? No, I would eventually fall again. I'd make some other mistake. But a champion in God's eyes, a champion in athletics, a champion in the Word of God is someone who just keeps getting up, learning from their mistakes. They don't go out and practice sinning. No, they practice the truth. And when they happen to sin and they fall, they learn from it, they ask for forgiveness, and they get up, they keep saying hit it, and they keep moving forward. That's what a child of God does. Now, I don't know if you noticed in 1 John 3 twice, it says you could recognize if someone is a child of God or a child of the devil. That really jumped off the page at me because I realized we are all creations of God, but we are not all children of God. We are either a child of God through our faith in Jesus Christ or we are a child of the devil because we have not given our life to Jesus Christ to God. 
So that kind of hit me. And I want to be aware of that. I want to be aware as I go through life, am I representing my father? Or am I acting like I'm a child of the devil? Am I? God has paid too high a price for me and for you, for us to just keep living however we want to and not taking into consideration of how we represent him, how we're living. There's things he wants us to do. There are things that He has prepared for us long ago before the foundation of this world. But if we are living our own life, doing whatever our flesh desires, we're not following after the footsteps of our Heavenly Father. We're not walking with Him. We're not going to accomplish the things He desires for us to. And the things that He has for us are good. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They're good plans. Wherever you are right now, God has plans of redemption. God has plans of restoration. God has plans to use you. But it starts with your obedience. It starts with obedience in the littlest detail. It starts with my obedience. It starts with stepping out and trusting God. Doing the things that He says to do. The things that we don't really think even matter. They matter. And they can be the difference between amazing blessings in your life or incredibly painful consequences. And I don't want that in my life. I don't want it for me. I don't want it for you, our victorious living family. God doesn't want it for his children. He doesn't want it for his creation. So many people think, oh, he can't be a loving God. Look what he, he, well, loving God wouldn't send someone to, to hell. You're right. And a loving God doesn't, our loving Heavenly Father doesn't send anyone to hell. People choose to go to hell by rejecting his son, Jesus. We refuse blessings by walking in disobedience. We refuse the plan he has for us by following our own plans and taking things into our own hands. God is for us. He's a good, good Father, a good, good God who wants to give you amazing opportunities to see how faithful He is, but it it comes through our obedience. It comes with sacrifice. We are called, it says in Romans 12, I believe it is. Turn to Romans 12 if you have your Bible real quick, and I'll find it for us. We are to be a, a living sacrifice you want to kind of sum up how a child of God should live and represent our Father? It says in Romans 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies. So this is Paul saying to his brothers and sisters in Christ who are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. He says, I plead with you. I'm begging you. To give your bodies. They're not even our bodies. Remember, they were bought with a price. They're God's bodies. Give them back to God because of all that He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Right here, our response to God's grace, our response to being adopted into his family, being born again into a spiritual family and being saved for all eternity, our response is to give our bodies, our lives, our resources, our families, our ministries, everything, our businesses, our present moment and our future and even our past to God. All of that is our lives. We give it to God. We present it to Him. They become a living and holy sacrifice. Think about a sacrifice was laid on the altar. We're to be a living sacrifice. We are to climb up on the altar every day. When we get up, we say, God, today I give my life, my mouth, my hands, my resources to you. Use them. And I trust that whatever you've got for me is so much bigger and better than anything I could have done and planned for myself. So I give it all to you. This is truly the way to worship our Father. That's what it says right there. And uh, 
to be a sacrifice, to give our bodies, means that we don't copy the behavior of the world. We come out from the world. Does that mean we go live in a room and shut the door and never interact? No, because we are called to go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. But we are to be different. We are to come out from under the customs and the behaviors and the way the world thinks and the way the world speaks and the way the world acts and the way the world responds. That's not to be us. Children of God are to be different. We are called to be different. So we aren't to keep sinning. We're to live clean, innocent lives as children of God. That's Philippians 2, 14 through 15. So that we shine like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your mouth. Honor God with your life. Walk in obedience. Give your bodies to Him. Take care of of the things that God's given you, including your mind, your body, your resources, your family. These are things that really please our Father. And they set us up for success. And I know there's so much more we could touch on. I mean, I'm looking right here, Philippians 2, 14, where it's talking about us shining. It starts that verse, says, do everything without complaining and arguing. I mean, get in the Word, and I'm getting in the Word, and just see what it is, how we're to live. This is our basic instructions before leaving earth. Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. This tells us how to live. It tells us how to respond. It also, if you want to become aware of who we should be and how we should act and represent God, this is what you need to study. If you want to understand and be aware of who God is, this is what needs to be studied. And You can honor God with your time by getting in His Word, by studying, because the Bible says study, meditate on the Word of God. These are commands, not because God's saying, I want you to go read the Bible. I want you, no, He wants you to, He wants so it will go well for you. So a lot of times this is all preached and shared in a very negative way. You need to be obedient. You need to do this, abstain from this. Why? So it will go well for you. Not because God is a fun zapper. It's not because he wants to steal your joy. He wants to give you joy. He wants to protect you from the consequences and the natural curses that flow out of disobedience from God. Disobedience to God. He loves you. You know, I think about, I, my dad built a lake for me to water ski on. I was a professional water skier, competed for 35 years. And at the end of the lakes are two islands that you would go around, and there was rocks on those islands. And, excuse me, rocks on the islands and rocks on the shoreline. And I was taught by my mother, who was driving the boat, and my father, who had built the lake, when you go around the island, stay behind the boat. Is that because they hated me? Is that because they didn't want me to have fun? No, it's because they knew if I got outside of the wake, I could gain too much speed and end up in the rocks that were just feet off that boat wake. God is your power source and he's taking you through a course. He has it all planned out, but to the left and to the right, to the left and to the right, I had it backwards. It probably looked right to you, (laughs) but it was wrong in here. To, to the left and to the right or to your left and right. It's, um, there's danger. And that's why he says, don't turn to the left or to the right from the word of God. Why? Because not because he's wanting to steal your fun. He knows there's danger out there. And he wants as a heavenly father, a good father who loves you. He wants to protect you so that it will go it will go well for you and your family so that his blessings can be flattening you and overtaking you not the world there is so much more to life but sometimes we don't experience it because of our own choices our own choices so it's time like that picture a couple of weeks ago to to we are to suit up and everything that God's given us remember that little boy with the superman sh- shirt on the outfit that's what God has given to us everything that we need for this life and the life to come everything we need to complete what God has called us to do everything we need lives in us and it's made available to us because of who our heavenly father is but we have a responsibility not just to represent him well but to live well 
And as we live well, we walk in obedience, we will be representing him well. We will be showered with blessings and people are going to take notice and say, whatever it is you've got, I want. That peace you have, that joy you have, it won't be just about material things. Whatever that is, that faith you have, I want it. And we will be representing and we will be pointing people to him. And I just hope that this has helped you. I, it's helped me. It fires me up and it reminds me that I want to glorify God. I want to glorify Him with my words that I speak, with my life that I live, that the way that my body looks and the way that my body is taken care of, the things that I interact with people um, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, sexual relationships, all that. It needs to be pure, to live innocent, clean lives. Because children of God live righteous lives. Not because we're righteous in ourselves, but because God has made us righteous through his blood. And he will empower us and he will bless us as we commit our bodies, give them to him, and determine, I ain't going to copy the behaviors of the world. I'm going to imitate my heavenly father because I'm a child of God. And when you do that, friend, victory is coming. So, we have completed, unless the Lord gives me something else in the coming week, our awareness series on who we are as children of a most high God, of a loving Father, of a good God. That's who we are. We have talked about how we should respond and how we should live. And now we're going to start talking a little bit about the enemy because I lived many, many years without having a clue that there was a real enemy that was whooping my tail. And I just thought, you know, if I go to church and I open my Bible every now and then, I say my prayers, I'm good. When the reality is, the devil doesn't play fair. And if you can't recognize his tricks and his traps and his negative thoughts and the things that he, the way, his, his mojo, the way that he acts and goes through life um, and interacting with you, you're going to be blindsided. And so it's very important. I don't like to give him a lot of air time because <laughs> he's defeated. And that's what we're going to remember as we go through this. But it is so important for us to remember that he has still become aware of his tricks and his traps so that we can experience the victorious life that our Heavenly Father died, sent his son to die to give us. Okay, I am signing off. Remember, if there's anything that our ministry can do for you, pray with you about. If you are incarcerated, you're going to see some slides come up. They have our information on there. We have a correspondence team that can handle your request and make connections for you. Um, not with your family and different things like that, but connecting you to resources and things like that um, that we might have connections with. I can't promise the world, but we'll see what we can do. And um, if you are outside of prison and you need prayer, for anything, um, please call the number that is on the screen. If you want to connect um, with our Victorious Living family as a partner, you can go to our website, victoriouslivingmagazine.com, and there are ways that you can partner with us so that we can get these videos into prisons all over the U.S. so that we can get this magazine printed. This is really where our main cost is, is in these magazines. And man, are we color coordinated tonight or what? Roger's wearing his pink. I got my purple and we got a little purple going on behind us. But yeah, if we, back to my thing here, if you want to help us get these in, every week more facilities are requesting this magazine and now it's bilingual. And so please go to that website, victoriouslivingmagazine.com. Every dollar that you sow into this ministry sends a magazine into a prison. That magazine stays there for years to come, touching multiple lives. All right, God bless you and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing you next Monday for more Monday, where we'll experience more of God's victory and love in our life. Bye-bye.